Hi, I'm Aisha. Hi, I am Samalia. Hi, I am Nuri Nadila Bizi Zaha. Hi, I am Steve Zeno. Hi, I'm Hazimi Madudin. We are going to talk about Pfizer and Neff Holdings Berhad, which is known as FNN Company. Pfizer and Neff Holdings Berhad has been incorporated since the year 1883. FNN is known as one of the oldest and biggest food and beverage companies in the world. FNN Company is listed on Bursa Malaysia's main board producing carbonated soft drinks by John Fraser and David Kalmer Smith, from whom the FNN initials are derived. The company has an annual turnover of close to $4 billion from its core businesses in the manufacture, production, sale and marketing of beverage and dairy products. is headquartered in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It built on over a century of experience that makes FNN deliver sustainable performance and development with the well-being of communities and the environment to meet the present and future needs of the customers. According to FNN official website, the company has a vast portfolio of beverages such as 100 plus isotonic, FNN season Asian and Oyoshi. Additionally, it is also the undebatable leader in the dairy market. Within the dairy line, the company produces sweetened condensed and evaporated milk as well as packaged milk and juice products under the gold coin and farmhouse. FNN company's mission is to provide superior return to our shareholders, excellent value for our customers, and a rewarding career for our employees. Their vision is to become the leading total beverage company in Malaysia and the region. The objective of FNN company is to make sure dairies and soft drinks products of FNN had fulfilled the consumer's need for all stages. Okay, next, let's talk about the overview of Madame Bee issue. Okay, on January 12, 2020, the World Health Organization recognized coronavirus disease 2019 COVID-19 as a rare pneumonia illness that started in Wuhan and spread to the other countries. Okay, beginning March 18, 2020, the government enforced a moment control order which is MCO. State at home orders were issued outdoor activities including interstate travel were prohibited and all the companies were closed with the exception of a few selected critical services and the natural resources sector. Okay, the first case of COVID-19 was discovered in Malaysia on January 24, 2020. COVID-19 has a higher transmission rate than SARS and MERS. According to medical research, by comparing the number of countries infected with a coronavirus, this may be demonstrated. Coronavirus has infected 175 countries compared to the 29 countries infected with the SARS and only 28 countries affected with MERS. COVID-19 has a negative influence on Malaysia's economy as seen by the countries high unemployment rate. Malaysia unemployment rate is 3.3% in 2019. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant influence on Malaysia economy. The unemployment rate was 3.2% in January 2020, but it continues to rise until May 2020 when it hits 5.3%. This is a negative trend in labor demand. Thus, this is not a positive phenomenon. Okay. On the other hand, the foreign exchange rate can be used to evaluate the relative state of the economy. This is because the foreign exchange rate is so important to a country's trading level. Malaysia currency rate for one US dollar in March 2019 was RM4.08 and it has declined to RM4.26 in July 2020. Next, 
The tourist industry is one of the industry in Malaysia that has been badly damaged by the COVID-19 outbreak. Malaysia has seen a significant decrease in visitor arrival. The overall number of tourists that visited Malaysia in 2019 was 26 billion 100,784. However, by mid 2020, that number has dropped to 4 billion 252,997, a decrease by 21 billion 847,787. In a nutshell, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant economic impact on Malaysia. As a result, each individual has a responsibility to assist Malaysia in winning this fight. So, the first challenge that Afghans have to face during big 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 is. By the issue of keeping the Movement Control Order (MCOs) standard operating procedure (SOP), which required them to decrease the number of workers to only 16%, with the remaining 40% required to work from home. In order to ensure restricted movement, the corporation had to reduce its operating hours, which led to inefficiency and ineffectiveness. And it also will affect their whole company performance during the pandemic. Furthermore, the company is still unfamiliar with the new norm, and it takes time to adapt and to be familiar with the situation. So there is a progress in their production, but it is slower than before. And as a result, the company was unable to function as efficiently as possible. Notably in terms of water and energy usage, and also their plans for new project implementation were postponed. During the Malaysian Movement Control Order (MCO), Afanans worked closely with raw and packaging material suppliers to maximize output, despite working with a smaller staff and fewer hours than the government required. Moreover. As a big company in the food and beverage industry, FNN has many employees that work together in order to achieve the company's target. And this company is also known as a generous company that provides all kinds of benefits for their employees. However, due to pandemic COVID-19, this big company has no chance to deny that employee state of condition is one kind of challenge to be faced. Challenge relating to employee state of condition can be seen in various aspects. Such as employees' health, employees' mental health, employees' financial problems, and many more. During the pandemic, Mr. Lim, as a CEO, is extra cautious about his employees' health. This is because, in order to make sure their products are clean and safe for the consumer, employees' health is the first thing that Mr. Lim should prioritize. Due to COVID-19, the Ministry of Health always has an eye to ensure every company practice. High standards of environment hygiene in order to produce high quality products. Other than that, related to the Movement Control Order (MCO) and due to economic falls, Mr. Lim is also aware that his employees are having difficulty surviving in this modern world. Nevertheless, he does not turn his back on his employees, but in fact, he lends his hands and help what he can to lighten the burden. For instance. During MCO, Mr. Lim gave a special weekly allowance and mark on early payment in the first couple of months during MCO to help families that require cash during this crisis period. The last and the third challenge of FNN company during the COVID-19 pandemic is the lower demand from the consumer and also high overflow in commodity price. The demand for beverage products, particularly soft drinks and sport drinks, are low because of movement control order during the COVID-19. The dining in band, at food, and beverage outlet, as well as the limited operation hours for convenience stores, had a negative impact on out-of-home consumption in Malaysia. During the FNN fourth quarter, their profit fell by nearly a third. 
because of a high spike in commodity prices and the accounting of restructuring charges. Their net profit decreased by 31.7% and also their sales is decreased by 6% due to lower demand and a, and a high overflow in commodity prices. Lastly, the CEO of FNN, which is Lim Yu, said that the company financial year 2021 was totally challenging in terms of demand and cost. So what is the first recommendation? The first recommendation that, that the company can do is to make a proper timeline and adjustment. As the company has a limited number of workers, Mr. Lim as the CEO needs to make a proper timeline and adjustment about how many units the company wanted to produce so that they won't overproduce or vice versa. For example, Mr. Lim and the top manager can assign each worker to produce 1,000 beverage using the machine. And if the workers are willing to do more, the manager should give a slight rise in their salary so that the workers feel motivated and willing to produce more. This can result to a stable production even though they have limited number of workers in the factory. Next, as for the short time of operating hours, the workers can converge on or focus more on the part that require less time to be done. For example, FNNs not only manufacture beverage and dairy products, but they also produce glass containers. So glass manufacture seems to require more time to be done. So maybe FNNs can lessen the production of glass and increase the production of beverage and dairy product as this product require less time to produce. Overall, the production may be slightly dropped in glass manufacture, but at least the beverage and dairy product sales can cover the losses in glass manufacture. So the FNN's overall performance can become more stable. Furthermore, the recommendation to face employee state of condition challenge is that Mr. Lim should obey the government orders connected with current pandemic issues. First and foremost, he must make sure his employees are vaccinated. This is one of the alternatives to safeguard his employees' well-being. During this pandemic, vaccines act like a shield to protect ourselves. It might not fully prevent the virus, but the percentage to get worse is low when we are vaccinated. To ensure the safety of the products, staff who work at factories should be prioritized to get vaccinated first. Other than that, Mr. Lin may encourage his employees to withdraw the employees' provident fund, EPF, Aligned with recent government policy to help its employees financial problems. In addition, due to the current uncertain situation that might occur anytime, FNN company is suggested to create an app with cooperation from the Ministry of Health for its employees. The app may have information about COVID-19 status, FNN company's hotline number, vaccination profile, and QR code scanner for the employees to scan QR code before entering the workplace aligned with MaxGetra app. With this app, FNN employees will stay updated about current situation and also it is easier for the Human Resource Department to check their employees' well-being. Finally, the last recommendation to solve the lower demand and high overflow in commodity price in FNN company is by well managing the company and also introducing the new products responding to consumer demands during the challenging times of COVID-19. As consumers are searching for faster and easier ways to get FNN products to support their new patterns while living and working during a pandemic, FNN has launched FNN Life in Malaysia which is a new flagship e-commerce store during the MCO to offer the product details, nutrition values, recipes and loyalty programs to the consumers. Mr. Lim also has stated that the company cost management really helped moderate the high commodity price as well as freight and warehouse costs. 
Next, Lim also added that they will continue to offer products that fit the changing needs of consumers and adjust their product pricing to protect their business from cost challenges such as rising commodity costs and other input materials. FNN also has collaborated with Nanyang Technological University in Singapore to research that will result in healthier products and better food packaging for the consumer. FNN has always strived to deliver their pure enjoyment and pure goodness by promising healthier options without compromising on taste to the consumer evolving needs. Okay, for the last part, we can conclude that the COVID-19 pandemic has significant impact on Fraser and Neef Holding Berhad as one of the Malaysia's leading beverage maker and distributor. The company's initial challenge were the Malaysian Movement Control Order, MCO, and Standard Operating Procedure, SOP, which required Mr. Lim as CEO to create a current time frame and adjust how many units the company wished to produce in order to handle the problem. Okay, second, when it comes to employee state of condition, FNN ensure that everyone in the company is vaccinated and encourage workers to withdraw their EPF. Okay, finally, the challenge were lower demand and high overflow in the commodity price. In this case, Mr. Lim need to well manage the company and introducing product responding to consumer demand. With all the FNN efforts, it is clear that the organization does not give up easily in this phase of audiversity and continually striving to deliver the greatest service to its consumer. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you for watching. Until the end, please like and share our video to all your friends. Okay, bye-bye.